Well, can you shout glory today? Let's Hallelujah. give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Open the eyes, Lord.
is his love for me. The sun sets free, who oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Some me. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Come on, someone give him a hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah. Who are you today? I'm a child of the living God. I'm a child of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
this time of desperation when all we know is doubt and fear there is only one foundation we believe we believe in this broken generation when all is dark you help us see there is only one salvation we believe we believe we believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe.
Well, well hallelujah and praise hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I wonder today before I came out here if they would sing that song. <laughs> that is is my favorite song before I try to minister the word and God is still God. If we can believe yes. what what that song says, it don't matter. Yes. Don't matter what the enemy might bring our way. Yes. It don't matter what he tells us, it don't matter what he tries to do Amen. to us. Yes. We are yes. gonna make it through. Yes. God, God is still God. Yes, he is. Still room, su rule supremely in the heavens. And one of these days, like the song says, he's going to come and take us home. Yes. You know, we're, we're living in troubled times. I don't remember. I, I look around and I, I, I don't see anybody anywhere near my age today. No. I always hope <laughs> when I come to church, there'll be one or two. That's That's as much over 39 as I am. But, but I don't, don't see anybody. But it don't matter. God is still God in no matter. No matter what happens or what goes or anything that goes on, God is in control. You know, we, we look out at the world today and we see the, the things that are happening. I don't ever remember enough. I, I'm a, if I live till... July the 22nd, I'll be 88 years old. And I, I, have, I have never saw anything to compare with the troubles that we're having and the things that we're living on. You know, I think I heard today that there was another shooting in Texas yesterday. So just every few days, somebody, for some reason, wants to shoot somebody. And it's going on and on, and it's nothing more than the devil. That's right. I, I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is, or who it is, yes. or what does it, in just a few minutes. If I want to go to the the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, starting with the tenth verse. Well, maybe I won't need these. If I, if, if I got good light and close enough to the Bible, I've, I've fought these things for all of my life. But if you have your Bibles, if you turn to the, I'll read. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that yes. you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now this is the thing yes. that is causing all the trouble that we see throughout the land today. The devil, is he, he knows he has but a short time. And he's working just as hard as he can work to stop God's people from making it through to the glory land. But church, if we believe the song that they just sang, we're going to make yes. it. Yes. There, 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 there's not enough devils or demons or imps or whatever you want to talk about inside or outside of hell to stop God's church. Yes. God, Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, Upon this rock I am going to build my church and the gates of hell shall yes. not prevail yes. against it. Yes. And it, it don't mean that we're going to have, we're stand and wait Jesus. for the devil to come against us, but it means we must go against the gates of hell and push every day yes. and every night, no matter what. It may be just to pray. We may yes. need to get somewhere alone by ourselves and get down on our knees and cry out to God. The Bible says that we should preach. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should pray. And I guess I'm going to read that in just a few minutes. But we should pray for the whole church. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, where you shall be able to quench all the fire darts of the wicked, 
and take on this, take the helmet of salvation and sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplications in the spirit and watching there too in perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we need to pray for every church. That's right. If they name the name of Jesus and they let, they believe that Jesus is Lord, we need to keep them in in prayer. You know, I I miss seeing you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's um, it's been been a while since I've saw most of you. But you know, we have to do what we have to do. That's right. Yes. So, sometimes things come along that we don't really want to to do or to stay with, but sometimes you have to do. If, if the Lord wants you there and He lets you know He wants you there, you have to do what God would have you do. But as I said, we are wrestling against the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness of this world. This, this uh, epistle that I, I just read part of it too was one of four. This was a man that wrote this epistle to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul. This was the fourth epistle that was written from a Roman prison. Mm -hmm. Now, you have, you have to be really dedicated and concentrated, and I know what all you would call it, to, to ride, to be in prison and still preach the gospel. Yes. But this was a man that one time destroyed the Bible said he wasted the church of God. But when God knocked him down on the way to Damascus and, and revealed Jesus Christ unto him, this man became dedicated. That's right, yes. He became concentrated. He became a person that would proclaim the gospel no matter what. Everything, he went through many things. I don't believe any of us, of us has ever went through the things like Paul went through. But he was a man that said, I know Jesus Christ. I know who he is. I know what he does. I know what he thinks about this world and about this people. And I'm going to stand no matter what. And he did. He, he kept himself unspotted from the world. And he proclaimed the gospel of Christ to all those people that he, he sent him to. He has given us most of the New Testament. But God, as I've already said one time, is still God. Yes. Yes. And I, I believe that God is here. Yes. 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 I believe that the Spirit and the power of Almighty God is here. And I don't know what God wants to do with this place. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I do in a way. No, I know He wants it to win souls. Yes. I know He wants it to see people delivered from alcohol and drugs and all yes. those things that, yes. that yes. try to hold people down. So God, if you'll just let him, if you'll just hang on, and don't matter what men might say, don't matter what the government might say, you know, yes, I, I, I have struggled with this, or that I ought to say things like this or not. And maybe I'll get to the rest of my message here in a minute. But we are on our way to glory. We are on our way to a home far beyond the sky. We're on our, on our way to a place where there'll be no trouble, there'll be no sickness, there'll be no disease, there'll be no pain, there'll be no more crying. Yes. But we've got to endure. The Bible says endure until He comes. But what, I, what I'm about to say, I believe that somewhere down the road, as we look and we see what things are happening in the world and see how people are turning against the church, I believe one of these days the true church, the church that, that stands for Jesus Christ, the church that stands for the things that God is and what God does, yes. I believe is going to see persecution. Yes, it is. But also I believe that during this time, full power, all the power that the apostles had we will rest upon the church again. And I feel it running up and down my feet. I, I believe it will rest upon the church again. I remember during, back during when most of us were still at Mountain View. And, and we went on the lockdown because of the virus. We was having prayer. I, I'd ask, ask the people all that could to pray with me at 8 o'clock every night. 
And I remember the second Monday of the close down, I went to my 8 o'clock time of prayer, and, I, and before I even began to pray, it seemed like I felt the presence of the Holy yes. Spirit in the room with me, and I began to pray. And I believe that the Spirit moved upon my heart that says someday full power is going to be restored yes. to the church. But there will be, in that time, there will be a, a time of persecution. The devil will try everything he can do, just like he did the early church, to stop it. But if we'll just hold on to God, there's not anything inside or outside of hell that can stop it. Amen. Right, yes, yes. And we'll just keep walking. Yes, yes. yes. Keep on crying, <laughs> keep on praying, keep on preaching. Keep on doing the things that God would have us do. And I believe that God is going to take us there. We're, we're having troubles. I, I have never saw it like it is today. That the devil is working so hard against our families, against our friends, against the churches. And, and, and we can see it even in our government where the, where the devil is working. I, I believe that he sits above the White House. And I, we don't know today, and I, I guess I'd probably get called up and maybe put in jail if people heard me. <laughs> but we do not know who's running the government. Right. That's right. We've got a man who says he is, mm -hmm. but some of the things that's happening, I believe it's coming from somewhere else, maybe across the sea. I don't know. Right. I shouldn't probably shouldn't have said that. That's all right. But, that's all right. Go ahead. That's all right. Go ahead. But God, as I've already said two or three times, God's still God. Yes, yes He is. And it don't matter what anybody else does. As long as we, if we believe and we hold on, God is going to take us through and we're going to see yes. the power of Almighty God work again. Yes. Yes. Now, we, yes. we, ha we have some of this. We have some people that are healed, some people that are delivered from miraculous healings and stuff like that but I believe it's going to be like it was in the days of the early church that God yes. is going to move yes thank you and as Paul talked about when we wrestled against flesh and blood he went over in the 10th chapter of the second Corinthians in the third chapter he said for though we walk in the flesh we don't war after the flesh for, we, the, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the devil tries to get a hold of us and get us down and hold us and set on us and do whatever else he can do to us. But God said, I have given you power. If you put on the whole armor of God, if you walk in these things, and in it, the devil cannot do anything. He can make you think he's going to do. He might, he might cause you trouble and problems. But he, we have a spiritual warfare. We have the whole almighty spirit of God resting within our hearts and within our lives. And there's not anything that, that this spirit won't do to help us. He does what Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, tells him to do. And, and Jesus will tell him do whatever we need to, to take care of us if we'll just worship and praise and glorify and magnify and walk with our Lord and Savior. The Bible says in the, the, the fifth verse of this chapter, casting down imaginations. You know, the devil, he brings all kind of imaginations. That's what one way it gets to us. It's, it's through our eyes and through our mind, bringing imaginations, trying to tempt us. Yes. But the Bible says that we can cast these things down. Yes, right. Yes. That we, we don't have to listen. We don't have to look upon these things. He says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If we let Christ have his way and the Holy Ghost have his way in our heart and life, then he's going to help us. Yes, yes. right. He will. I, I, when I was just a young Christian, well, I wasn't all that young. I was about 26 years old. But I had just come into Pentecost. Didn't know a whole lot about it. I had went, been, been around the church of God a little bit during my earlier days. But the devil was always trying to put things in front of me to make me do things or make me think I wasn't saved or make me think this, that, and the other. But God is still God, and He will He will keep us through this. Yes, come 
He will hold us, raise us up, and bless us, and let us know that I am your God. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, I, will, I will take care of you. There is nothing more powerful than God. I had thought about talking about the creation a little bit. And, but I, I run across this, and I went ahead and thought I'd go ahead and, and, and go with this today. It, uh, a God that is mighty enough to speak a world into existence. Not just the world, but the animals, the trees, the plants, and make man out of the dust of the ground. And then one, then one time when he looked at that man, he said, it's not good that Adam be alone. So the Bible says he called a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he took a rib out of Adam and made a woman and, and gave her to Adam. So a God that can do that can do anything. Yes. Right, yes. A, a God that can hang the stars and the moon in the sky, yes. he can do anything. Yes. Yes. So we're, we're serving a God that can do anything. He did all of that stuff. Yes. And if, if we're just serving, yes. if we'll just walk with him, yes. if we'll just talk with him and be with him day by day, then God is going to take care of us. Yes. We're going to see problems. I, 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 my wife right now, she's not in too good a shape. But God still takes care of us. That's right. I, there's many other needs that I have, but God still keeps us every day. Yes. He still takes us through, and he'll, he'll walk with the church no matter where it goes. Thank you. If we just hold on. If we just say, God, here I am. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to keep your word. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. Just as long as you want me to do it, and we'll keep our promise to God, God's going to keep every promise in this book to us. Going to take care of us. Going to take care of us. This battle that I was talking about with the devil first began in the Garden of Eden. Actually, it began in heaven. When the devil said, well... I'm going to rise up against the throne of God. And I'm going to take this place over. It don't say all of that in the Bible that he said this thing, but I believe he had it in his mind. See, he was, he was just like we was. They was. I believe they were created so they could think. They could reason out the things. And the devil got to thinking he was bigger than he was. And he said, I, I'm going to rise my throne up above that of God. The Bible tells us it wasn't so. Right. He, he didn't have the power. And he was cast down into the Garden of Eden. And he caused th this trouble by going to a woman named Eve. Now, I, I don't know how much he, he talked to Adam. I, but I get it in my mind. I don't know exactly what went on. But I get it in my mind that... Eve go out during the day and gather up the fruit and stuff for Adam, and they would have their breakfast or dinner or lunch or whatever it was. Now, I feel like the devil watched her. Don't know exactly what happened. But you know the devil watches you, and he knows our weakness. Yes. Right. And, and, and he works on our weaknesses. And, and their weakness was that, that there was a tree in the midst of the garden that the devil had told Adam, said, you cannot eat of this tree. Said, for the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Didn't mean he's going to fall down dead. But it meant he was going to be separated from God. That God's fellowship, the fellowship that God gave them when he would come down in the cool of the evening, they were going to lose that. And I, I believe he watched Eve as she went about in the garden. And maybe he talked to her and said, Eve, look at that tree. Isn't that a beautiful sight? There's a wonderful fruit on earth, and, and if you, you will eat it, God said you're going to die, but I tell you, you're going to become like God, and you're not going to know everything. Yeah. And she, he kept on. And he finally found Eve at her weakest time. Now, I didn't mean to say all of this, but I'm going to go ahead and say it since it got started. I believe he found Eve at her weakest time, or that's how I think about it. 
And he said, Adam, or Eve, don't that look good? She said, boy, I believe it does. And he says, why don't you just eat of it and give Adam some and let him eat? And so she did. And the Bible said that when he, that when they eat of the fruit, I don't know if, if Eve had just eaten of it and Adam hadn't, I, I don't know if God might have gotten him another help me. But sin and death came upon the earth and that for I, I believe that the fear was so great when Adam realized and Eve realized what they had done, the Bible said they hid themselves among the trees of the garden. And when they heard God coming down in the cool of the day, they were hid and he, he saw what would had happened. He knew what happened. <coughs> but God put them out of the Garden of Eden and, and wouldn't let them back in it. Put an angel there with a flaming sword and would not let them back in. So if we hold on to God, that, that is the biggest thing, yes. holding on to God. Yes. God has his hand stretched out. If we'll just reach up and grab it and hang on, then church, we're going to make it. Yes. Yes. It, it, it don't matter what, what happens. Yes. The, we're going to have troubles, and the devil's going to say, well, look what God's doing to you. You look what he's doing to that person over there and they go to church and they pray and they give their tithe but God don't love them and he'll say he don't love you either. But he does. Yes, he does. Yes. The Bible tells us that and I'm getting way off of what I was going to say but I'm going to go it's ahead and say right. anything. Right but John <laughs> I about forgot the scripture. But anyway, the Bible says, For God so loved the world yes. that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to destroy yes. the world, that the world through Him might be saved. Yes. So God loves you, church. Yes. He yes. cares for yes. you. No matter, no matter what the devil tries to make you think, God is still God. God is still loving. He loves us and He's going to take care of us. Yes. Thank Praise you. But Jesus Christ, <coughs> the Son of the living God, is here today through the person of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. I, I believe He's here today to give us the love yes. and the things that we have need of. And, and when Adam and Eve sin, man from that time forward began to struggle with sin. There was a time when God gave Moses a covenant. He gave Moses a plan for the Ark of the Covenant. He gave Moses a plan for the tabernacle. And he told him how to go about doing it and letting the priest go in once a year and offer up a sacrifice for the sins of the priest and, the, and of the people. And once a year on Atonement Day, the, the high priest would enter into the holiest of holies. He would offer up a sacrifice for his sins and for the sins of the people. And they would be rolled forward one year. But we don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. That's right. yes. There was a time when God sent forth his son, born of a virgin. And this was the way that God meant for the sins of every man and every woman and every boy and every girl on the face of the earth would be delivered once and for all Amen. from this sin. Amen. That we don't have to. We, I'm, I'm not saying we're not going to make a mistake every now and then. I'm not saying things are not going to happen. But like Paul said, how can you live in sin any longer? Yes. When you know the, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and He sets you free from the powers of sin and of death and of hell, we don't have to struggle with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we struggle with it because the devil tries to make us do it. But we can go before God and say, God, I need your help and God will help you. That's yes. right. Yes. He, he'll, do whatever, he'll, he'll do whatever it takes to help us get through the things that we're going through. Now, I know a lot of us are going through a lot of things. 
But God and the devil says, God ain't nowhere near you. God don't care about you. God don't love you. But He's by your side no matter. Yes. You may not feel Him. Lots of times you may go for a while without feeling God. I remember used to, when I first started in Pentecost, well, I, I, I was going through trials. When, when I, one, one day I went one night and when I had received, when, when I started, I went forward one night I, to pray. I, I felt like I had to go to an altar. I guess I could have talked to God and He would have, would have removed the sins and removed the things. But I felt, no, I've got to go to an altar. I went to, I went to church on one Sunday night and I didn't go to hear nobody preach. I didn't go to, to hear anybody sing. I didn't go to hear anybody do anything. I went to find myself an altar and I, I, had, I sat there and waited till the church was over. And when I went before God at the altar, you know, a lot of people, they, they shout and dance and, and praise God and they feel all glorified and excited inside. I didn't feel that. But when I went home and I laid down on my bed, <laughs> there was peace unspeakable. Yeah. And full of glory. Praise and, and, and I laid down hatred. I felt I hated my, my earthly father because he was an alcoholic and because of the things he did to us and to my mother. And I, 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 I laid down fear. I laid down loneliness. Yes. You know, I, was, I guess I felt like the most lonely person upon the face of this earth, but I felt when I went left the church that night and went to my house and laid down the fear and death, fear of death, Loneliness and hatred and all of those things had disappeared. Jesus. There was no longer there. Yes, yes, and sir. God will do this for us. Yes, yes, yes He will. How much longer? Oh, take your time. <laughs> take your time, yes, please. Praise the Lord. Jesus, as I've already said, is Lord. He He is here tonight to take care of today to take care of us to lead us and guide us. Jesus, in the 16th chapter of Matthew, the, the, the apostle or the, the disciples at that time, and the Bible said when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he began to question the disciples. He said, who does the Son of Man say that I am? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, Elias or John the Baptist or one of the other prophets or something like that. And, Peter, and Jesus said, well, who do you that say that I am? Peter said, Thou art the, the living God. You are the Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. Yes. And he said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes. And you know the story of how that they didn't really know what Jesus was telling them. But as he walked with them through this, this world and taught them things pertaining to the kingdom of God, taught them about things of heaven and showed them God in the flesh, and when he was resurrected, when he was <coughs> crucified, buried and was resurrected, the Bible says that he came forth out of the grave victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he walked again with the disciples for 40 days teaching them things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Yes. And he, in that 40 days, he taught them. He, it don't say what all that Jesus showed them or what all he taught, taught them. But I, I believe that he confirmed within their hearts and in their lives that he was Jesus Christ. And he was risen from the dead. And they could do whatsoever thing that he had told them that they could do. Because after the day of Pentecost, when that 40 days was over, the Bible says that they went into the upper room and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible said that the Holy Ghost came like a mighty wind, like a rushing mighty wind and it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost as the Spirit began to give them utterance. 
And the Bible says that after this, they went out and began to teach. The first day, I believe, was 3,000 souls saved in Peter's first sermon. The Bible tells us in many places 5,000 and 2,000. And the Bible said, And the Lord added daily such as should be saved. So church, we are, are supposed to be a soul-saving yes. station. Amen. How many have we sold? One. We are supposed to be a people that can preach deliverance and tell it to the people and see them delivered. We, we can see the alcoholic like my father was delivered and set free. We, I had five brothers that were alcoholics. But God is a more is bigger than has more power yes. than all of these things. He can do it, church. He can do it, and He will do it. If we'll just let Him have His way within our lives and stay within His hold, He will take us through, no matter. Like I said, well, I believe one of these days we're going to go through persecution. I believe one of these days there's going to be greater trials in the church that I've said since, has seen since the times of the early church. But God, who is still on the throne, is looking out over his church today. And I believe church is going to lift us up. I believe he's going to bring a mighty anointing such as never hasn't been since the early church. And see people delivered and set free in the power of God. But there will be. I feel like there will be persecution. But God still rules and reigns supremely even though. We see all these things that the, the world has brought, trying to bring into the church today. It, 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 God is still ahead yeah. of the church. Yes. 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 Jesus Christ is still the leader of the church. Yes. Jesus yes. Christ still reaches out and, and heals and delivers yes. and sets free. He does it through his people. Yes. We don't do the healing, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. but Jesus Christ the Son of the living God through the Holy Ghost reaches out to people if, if we'll minister, if, we, if we'll pray and glorify and magnify our God and ask Him to do these things if we do what we ought to do. God is going to do it. Yes. Hallelujah. He's, going, he's going to set people free. Yes. People that, that don't know which way to go. People that are bound and chained and fettered by sin and those that are down and out and those that don't know which way to go next, Jesus Christ can reach out to them and set them free and give them peace and joy and understanding and happiness. God is still God. I, I don't know how long I'll preach, but I believe I'm getting ready to close. The, the Bible says that God will do everything that He has told us He would do. Yes. Yes. Amen. All we have to do is accept it. Yes. Now, He is with us, church. Yes, He is. The devil will tell you, no, He's not. He'll tell you, you're not going to make it. You're going to fall by the wayside. I, I, I'm going to put you down. I'm going to trouble you. I'm going to get you so so tied up that you don't know which way to go. And I'm going to crush you. <laughs> but the devil is a liar. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 And the Bible says he's the father of it. That's right. Yes. John 10 and 10 says that Jesus Christ, the devil, the thief cometh not before steal to kill and destroy, but yes. I am come that they might have life and have it more yes. abundantly. Yes. Yes. The devil is a big liar. That's right. Yes. A big liar. Yes. But he is God. Yes. Not the devil, but God is yes. God. Yes. And Jesus is Lord. And the Holy Ghost is in the earth today to lead us and guide us and direct us and take us every which way we need to go. Yes. 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 yes.